thank you because of your compassion. Thank you for all that you are doing for us. We honor your name. We worship you. We exalt you and praise your holy name. We thank you because of everything you are doing. Lord, we say Lord, we say the other in the name of very morning. We are asking, oh Lord God, Spirit, come on. And you will name in our in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Amen. That you us to pray. We ask that Lord God, as we pray for an ideal home this morning, a songwriter said, Oh, give us a Christian home. Oh, give us a Christian home. Lord, we have a Christian home. A true Christian home. A Christian home where love wins. A Christian home in the proper low lifestyle that are God's glorifying. I pray that such a Christian home will be in the name of Jesus Christ. And as many home owners that are experiencing crisis, as many homes that are experiencing tumor, as many homes that are experiencing all God's Pataskata, Holy Father, as we raise our voices this morning, we pray for such a home. You will deliver in Jesus' name. Lord, Amen. Many, many families have been attacked. Many marriages have been attacked by the devil. And it's like the devil is having a free day this last day, attacking so many lives and attacking so many marriages. We pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that all the manipulation and the tactics of the devil against our home, against our children, against our spouses. Lord, it will not work. In the name Amen. of God, you will frustrate the devil. You will frustrate the money power. You will frustrate the activity. And it will not come to reality upon our lives in Jesus' name. We Amen. Thank you. Yes, sir. In Jesus' mighty name, people have come. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, God of heaven and earth. We thank you, Lord, God of heaven and earth. to the Lord this morning and worship and glorify his holy name and adore him and praise him. Let's lift his name higher. We yet another wonderful day. We thank you for the gift of sleeping and waking up. We adore the Lord because you are God. Father, we worship and bless your name for the great and wonderful things you have given our lives. We give you glory, Lord. We give you honor, Lord. Give your adoration, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for 
a wonderful thing she will do. Thank you for your hand upon our families. Thank you for your mercy over us. Well, thank you for you. All of you will be doing. Oh, no, thank you. 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 Amen. Amen. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank the Lord for the healing of uh, life was a little bit strong for some days now. And uh, myself, uh, you know, I couldn't tell her when I started experiencing a leak. Uh, I won't have to too strong. So I was just quiet and I was battling with headache some days ago. Because of these marathon classes I have for the jam students and all that, so I knew exactly what the problem was. I knew what led to the headache because I gave myself literally day and night and night, and night teaching to the jam students. So what I did, I had to, I didn't bother to use any drug, so I didn't know what to do, so I had to take time to rest and uh, not going out, and uh, also stay away from my phone for a while, and not that. And uh, but by the grace of God, the Lord has healed my wife, she's better now, and uh, even myself, even as at this morning now, I'm much, much better than I was even on Saturday morning and all. So... I want to thank the Lord, I want to give thanks to God for his mercy and the healing. I want to honor the Lord when we call upon him, he hears. Sometimes, too, there is need for rest for the body. And I personally realize that it's, it's not just about taking drugs. There are times the body just needs rest, the body needs to regain something, and then the body will come to its proper functionality. This morning, we shall be taking some prayer very seriously because our focus this morning is about LD home. Home is LD. And I don't mean LD physically, I mean holistically in many areas. So we have a lot of prayer points, we have a lot of things to pray about. But let's give thanks to God for His mercy, for His Open up and give thanks to God. Father, what people bless the reference your name. We commit our family to Lord to your hands. Father, that the songwriters wrote, say, Father, give us a Christian home. We thank you for the privilege you have given to us. We thank you. We thank you for the Christian early home you have given us. We pray that your hand will be mighty upon us. Your hand will continue to rest upon us. And we will not find space to come to our home, so Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want to start this morning. And you remember that scripture that says that I, that this will be heaven on earth. In even in Matthew chapter 6, where the scripture says that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Those are part of the thing we want to pray about this morning. That the will of God will be enforced, will be done in our home. And anything that does not look like the will of God in our home, we will join force together this morning. And then we will yank them off our family in the name of Jesus Christ. First and foremost, Amen. we shall call upon the Lord on behalf of our children. We didn't give birth to children to Satan. We didn't give birth to children for the demons and powers of darkness to influence. Our children are of the Lord. We are going to pray that Jesus Christ will be literally seen in the life of our children. Wherever they are, the Lord will save those who are not saved. And those who are saved, the Lord will establish them, keep them, and Jesus will be mightily prominent and preeminent in the life of those who are saved already. 
And if we have any family on this platform whose children are not born again, they will be born again. How will it be? The father and the mother are on their way to heaven and the children are on their way to hellfire. We want to pray in the name of Jesus. Part of the ideal home is that the children are saved. Part of the ideal home is that the children are coming to the kingdom. Part of the ideal home is that the children are coming to know the Lord. Let's talk to God in prayer and say, oh God, this is our desire this morning, that you will save our children. You will deliver Father, them. We lift up our voice unto you. Commit our homes, Lord, to your hands. Father, so we should have a home like in heaven on earth. And a home like that is where your name is referenced, where the father, the mother are born again, the children are also born again. Father, commit all our children this morning, Lord, to your hands. We pray that this uh, glory with internet in the world will not strip them away from you, oh Lord. Jesus, Lord, give us a give home. Give us home that heaven on earth. Give us home that heaven on earth. In the name of Jesus, Lord, God, you will pray that you will uphold our families, O oh Lord. Any family present in this platform where they are scattered, where they are not having joy, if only we pray. Father, pray for such families, O oh Lord, and restore back their, their love, their joy, in the name of Jesus. O oh Lord, give us the home. Father God, give us the same home. Father God, give us the same home. We are in this presence. We are in this Lord. We are in this presence. We are every now and then. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray for this morning. In the name of Jesus, Amen. We want to pray our own will be a spirit-filled home, where we have the home like circle. Yeah, it was filled with the Holy Ghost. Elizabeth, the wife, was filled with the Holy Ghost, and John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Ghost. We can have such an ideal home, such a beautiful home. The parents are few, the children are few, and everyone is spiritual in that home. We want to cry to God, make us and give us such a beautiful home where everyone is spiritual. By the Spirit and the power of the living God, shall we talk to God in prayer? Let's open our mouths. <laughs> I read Deuteronomy chapter 11 in verse 12. Deuteronomy chapter 11 in verse 12. Part of the ideal home. Because mm -hmm. remember, what are we praying about this morning? Ideal home. And let's believe what we are praying about. I believe in prayer. I believe that God answers prayer. I've seen answers to prayer over and over and over in my life and family. So it's not something I'm not sure of. When I pray, I I, I, believe, I will always believe that God answers. And we see God doing something amazing. In Deuteronomy chapter... Uh, Chapter 11, rather, 
verse 21. Read verse 21. It says that your days will multiply of your children in the love of the Lord swear unto your fathers things of heaven upon the earth. Now, before we go to the last part, let's take it for that uh, God multiplying the days of our children. Yes. To pray. We will not bury our children. In an ideal home, children are not to be dying young and prematurely. No. Parents are not to be burying their children. Yeah, in exactly. oh, oh. The days of our children, according to Deuteronomy 11, verse 21, shall be multiplied. They will live a fulfilled life. They will live a fulfilled days. They will live a fulfilled destiny. I we pray, parents, are you talking to God in prayer? Bible say that thy days may be multiplied, and the days of your children, you will not bury them. You will not bury, I will not bury my children. It will not be said, oh, the enemy has that family, and they kill them. God forbid. That child was traveling. In the water, in the river. In the days, oh, 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 in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh, thank you, God. Oh, in the name of Jesus, 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 if you look at the 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 other parts, it said, "In the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them, as the days of heaven upon the earth." What are the days of heaven? What are the things that happen in heaven? For example, you do not find sickness in heaven. There will be no sickness in our family. We want to pray every strange sickness that are there in our home as part of the ideal home God is giving to us, we will not be running elder scatter as a result of sickness. We want to pray by the Spirit of God, the Lord to deliver us, the Lord to heal us, the Lord to set us free from every strange sicknesses on our body. In the name of Jesus Christ, shall we open our mouths and pray right now. And there are often who are sick, the Lord heal, the Lord deliver. Those who have been rising on the Amen. Now, that place says, as the days of uh, heaven upon the earth, as the days of heaven. Again, do we find poverty in heaven? No, not at all. In heaven, they don't have to be praying for all oh, of supply, all oh, of supply. No, 
the supply is just there. The supply is in abundance. Uh, the people have been they are in fact they, there is no need for all of those because they is just there. Everyone just makes such a kind of a kind of uh, what do you call it now such a beautiful beautiful supply and the people in heaven are just there enjoying and if you read the book of revelation there's a fruit there's a tree that produces like that there is an everlasting enjoyment we want to pray we want to cry unto god now we find in many home and many family things are just up and down and then the man is not able to take care of the family. The woman is tired. Or the woman, uh, nothing is being done. The man not doing anything. And the woman is frustrated. The man is frustrated. Everyone is frustrated. The children are frustrated. Want to cry to God that poverty will be out of our home. In heaven, it is not there. In our life, it will not be there. Did you hear me now? Amen. I said it is not there. In our life and family, it will not be there. No poverty Amen. in heaven. Poverty in our life. Shall we pray? Let's talk to them. In there's nothing like poverty. All this cost of supply. Father, that we pray now. Take poverty away from us. Father, take poverty away from us. Father, we decree this morning that all our needs should be met. Up to our supply to be met. Every desire for our heart will all be met. In the name of Jesus, we pray this morning. We pray this morning. We cancel them, Lord. We cancel them, Lord. We cancel them, Lord. We decree that we have. The life of everyone oh Lord, all our desires will be met every day by day in Jesus' name. Father, you see that. Amen. Mighty name we pray. Amen. I want to cry to God quickly this morning. In that scripture, I read again. Uh, you, we can't be tired of reading a verse of scripture that is quite loaded like this. He said, as the days of heaven upon the earth, as the days of heaven upon the earth. Now, what do we observe again? As the day. Let, let me quickly take us to a, a scripture in Revelation. Uh, Sometimes we read some scripture. They are not meant for now. They are meant for the millennia. For example, this scripture is, is actually a millennia, millennia scripture. But you can make a, a futuristic scripture, a scripture that is meant for the future, you can make it a reality by instrumentality of prayer or true instrumentality of prayer rather. You can make what is meant for the future to be a reality upon your own life or on your family through the instrumentality of prayer. That's why yeah. some people are enjoying their life because they have been able to understand uh, a graph in scripture that you can make things that are not even meant for a particular group of people a reality, so long you can catch that revelation in verse four of uh, verse four of Revelation twenty one, and God shall wipe all tears from their eyes. Amen. He said, Amen. This is a millennia. This is a millennia. You see, there are those who believe in Yoruba. Yoruba has some kind of proverb, and those proverbs, some of them, uh, some of them are not really scriptural. For example, uh you might believe in what they call Kadara and Yomo, Kadara and all those things. They call it Ayomo, Kadara. They also believe in what we call Titanicon, Babaje, Titanicon, Nida, all those kind of terminologies and all of that. And uh, so there are those who just believe that uh, in your life you must struggle. Uh, the, it's not like, like your life cannot be rosy, family cannot be rosy. Uh, there are those who just believe that. Uh, 
And the family, they must always be quiet. Uh, how can you have a family? You say uh, the teeth do not buy the tongue, blah, blah, blah. They give all kinds of proverbs. And they don't believe that a home can be ideal. They don't believe that God can still bless a home, that you are not even fighting at all. It's so possible, brethren. It's so possible, leader. It's so possible, pastor. That even if you have misunderstanding, they, they say you just discover that the way you settle the misunderstanding, it does not lead gender into all kinds of quarrel and all that. Why? Because you have been able to master something and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Amen. Every Amen. tears Amen. this morning, God will wipe it away. It, this is God. This is scripture. Mm -hmm. And God shall wipe away tears. Whatever is giving your wife tear, the Lord shall wipe it away. Whatever is giving up, the Lord shall wipe it away. Whatever Amen. is giving our women, our men, our children tear, whatever is causing anyone tear on this platform, in the name of Jesus, and God shall wipe it away. Let's talk to God Amen. in prayer. Let's get to this millennia. Father, the millennia. We come before you, we bring your word before you this morning. Father, this word can apply in our adult millennials. Uh, as I as we pray, O oh Lord, that you wipe all tears away from our eyes, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Anything in the life of in my life that should cause me tears normally in the life of my wife that should cause tears in heaven. Father, we pray that you wipe away all tears from our eyes, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, I said in your word, consign the most divine which you command you, Father, we command in the name of Jesus. Wipe away tears from my eyes. 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 In the name of Jesus. Anything that is causing my consumption of tears, anything that is causing him tears, we pray this morning that you wipe them away, O Lord. Father, wash them and wipe them away, O Lord. Father, wipe them away, O Lord. Father, wipe them away, O Lord. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be the Lord, O Lord. And put some joy back in his life, in his family. In the name of Jesus. Everything that is not according to your will and purpose for him. Father, this morning. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will wipe away all tears from his eyes in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. Now. Uh, this scripture, like I said, I said it's millennia. Well, in the world we are in, oh, you just hear, oh, uh, the situation is very tough. We must go up and uh, life must be up and if our life is up and down, uh, it's not an easy road. We are traveling to heaven. Uh, there's the, this one, uh, that one, uh, the race is not uh, this. And, and then you find some people who rejoice in the uh, in them having sorrow and having pain and having agony, they rejoice in that. They even think that, oh, they are having sorrow continuously is the will of God and all that. They have a perverted view about scripture. They don't have a balanced view. They do not know that of a true. You can look at the scripture and you can lay hold upon that scripture. For example, you can get to a scripture that says, and thou shalt lend unto many nations and thou shalt not bow. Do you know that? That when, if that scripture becomes a rhema, because the scripture can be logos and rhema, it's both rhema. If it becomes a rhema to you, then you, ju you, you just realize, say, what? And then lay hold on that, you can lay hold on that scripture until it becomes a reality. And God always honors his word. You can read the scripture that says, there sh and the, the habitant of the land shall not say, I am sick. And then you look at your family and say, God, see what you said. I refuse any of my daughter, any of my son to be sick. And then you lay hold on this. And then you declare maybe one day or two day fasting. And then you say, oh God, I do not accept thee. Your word say, even if that is the only scripture you are reading, God must honor it. Oh. God must honor it. Yes. And then you go to another scripture and then you discover. Uh -uh. You, you are looking at those scriptures, but you discover those things are not reality upon your life. And then you say, oh God, you can't, you can't, nah, -uh. The scripture even says in Psalm 138, verse 2, 
that you honor your word above all your name. Oh, yeah, Oluwa, honor your name. Oluwa, honor your word. Answer your name in my family. Answer your name in this situation. We want to pray right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that God will answer this scripture upon God's servant. He said, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eye. And God's servant have been crying all day, crying all year, and for two, three years now. And the, the stability of the family have been in jeopardy, have been in serious chaos. And we, we are here. And many of us were enjoying our family, but we cannot fold our hand. No! The Bible says those that are spiritual, and then we should lift up the bodies of one another. We want to cry the body to God in prayer now and say the enough is enough. Lord, wipe these tears away. Uh-uh. Oluwa. Oluwa. Otitoge. In the name of Jesus Christ, let that tears be wiped away. Let God wipe the tear. Let God restore Father, the family. Father, will come before you this morning. We pray that everything that represents tears in Jesus our Christ. family. Father, wipe away this morning, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, and we lift up your servant before you, Father. On this issue of the family, we'll be praying for over one, two, three years. Father, heaven will come this morning. We pray, oh Lord, that you wipe every tear away from your servants, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, wipe every tear away, Lord. Wipe every tear away, Lord. Wipe every tear away, Lord. Wipe every tears away, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, everything that represents tears in the life of Pastor Matthew and this morning, oh Lord, we pray. Father in heaven, look into your world. Wipe them away, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father, you have sent your word that we will experience tears in our homes, in our family. The inhabitants of our home will not say, I am saying, oh Lord, we pray this morning that the perfect yeah, that, the perfect head that is your children bread you got to one to every member of our family this morning, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, in the world, give us perfect homes, oh Lord. Give us perfect heads, oh Lord. Give us perfect heads, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Amen. I want to show us something very quickly in scripture. When uh, Lord, uh, when uh, because we want to pray one prayer now again for God's servant, and but we want to engage in, in what they call um they, there's this way, uh okay, maybe when I lead the prayer, but can we remember a story in the Bible in uh Genesis? It's in Genesis, I think Genesis chapter um, yes, chapter 18, yes, chapter 18 where Abraham uh, interceded for Lot. Do you remember how when those angels met with Abraham and Abraham entertained them in that Genesis 18? And they after entertained them, and then eventually one of them said, actually the Lord himself, the Lord himself, because God was among those angels and God was the one speaking. And he said, Shall I hide from Abraham that which I do? That was God. That was God himself. So he says, shall I hide from Abraham that which I do? Now, then he began to say something about Abraham. Eventually, he revealed his intention to Abraham. They were coming to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And then Abraham knew that he had a family member there. And who was that family member? Lot. So he knew. And the... Uh, there's something very unique and special there. Now, first and foremost, we are going to uh, pray for ourselves, all pastors and leaders. There's a prayer point right there for every one of us. What I just said, I didn't plan this one now. This one I want to say. But there's a prayer point right there. I want to pray that God will give us such a heart like Abraham. Do you know that uh, Lord hurt him so much? He did, if, I, if you read Genesis chapter 13, you will see what Lord did. And uh, can you imagine somebody under you that you brought up and they threw you, it became prosper, and then he's now raising shoulder with you and all that. And then to the point that he just felt that he could be on his own. If it's the kind of Christianity that people practice today, 
Oko ma so pe koku jare koku ohun lo fowo e owo owo are fan ko to sele si another let him die they will not bother to intervene they will not bother to intercede they will not bother to pray you know that when you look at the life of those men and you not know why god really do them closer you will not know why god really call them there and when you look at the life Abraham forgot about all the misbehavior and the irrational lifestyle of lot and what he did he interceded you also remember the story how abraham was a uh, lot was captured in genesis chapter i think 14 and then how abraham also had to intervene and rescue him i mean lot would have died long ago but there was always someone that was just there who does not care about who did not care rather about the behavior he just like overlooking him and forgiving him and he has a large heart may god give us a large i want to pray in the name of jesus christ our heart will be large that no matter what people do to us we will just be readily to forgive we will be readily please let's pray this prayer pastor we'll be readily everyone on the platform whether it's your husband or your wife your children who will be who we have a large heart, a heart. Amen. 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 we come before the throne of excellence let's pray let's talk to god in prayer no matter what Lord did, whenever I get to trouble, he rises up for him. Father, everyone pray, O Lord, to give us that heart of forgiving and forgiving one another. Privilege, oh Lord, to know you more better than we do now. Father, we pray that you glorify yourself in our life and draw more closer to your dad. Be part, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Now, let's now go to uh, why I wanted us to read that scripture. Now, in that, um, where is it now? I was reading the scripture. Uh, okay now we we saw eventually well uh, in uh, joshua chapter 7 but before joshua chapter 7 i was reading the story to us in that genesis i was explaining a story to us now there's a statement abraham made that's the one i want to i'm landing off here in that uh, genesis chapter uh, 18 i want to read it it was one statement that abraham made i want to look for it, that statement I have, I've seen it. Genesis 18, verse 25. It said, uh, okay, let me read it from verse 24. I will not come to verse 20, verse 25. But eventually, there will be 50 righteous within the city. Will that also destroy and spare, and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? It said, that will be far from thee. To do after the manner. See, listen to this, oh, pastors and leaders. He said, That be far from thee. He was talking to God, not the angel, the God himself. God was among those angels. I said, There are three of them. One of them was God himself, gone, gone, along, gone, 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 Lord. And then he said, That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. Shall that be far from thee? shall not the judge of all the earth do right now do you understand what uh, abraham was saying here shall not yes, uh, uh, the judge of all the earth uh, uh, will you behave like the unbeliever will you behave like all those judges that that, that take that take by and just destroy the righteous and destroy everyone uh, uh, you are the judge of the all uh, the earth won't you do the right thing won't you carry out justice and god said god now responded they were talking one-on-one -on -one. And God said, if I find social number in, in, uh, in this, I will spare. If I find, I will spare. 
to the point that Abraham demanded for 10. Uh -uh. Don't we have up to right, 10 righteous leaders and pastors? Don't we have up to 10 righteous people who are joining this platform? Are we all sinners now? No, we are not all sinners. They are those of all by the grace of God, not by our power, that have been blood washed. And we know we are living for him in the secret and in the open. And Abraham said, for the sake of the 10, if God said, if you could just find 10, he will spare. God will spare this marriage. God will Amen. spare. Let us to understand something. Uh, Joshua said something. You see, it's not a matter of war, 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 war prayer. There are times that prayer has different shades. You find some people, they just think that everything is uh, it just demon, demon. The prayer has different types. Look at it. In, Je in Joshua chapter 7. Joshua chapter 7. I read quickly in verse 8. Oh Lord, what shall I say? Actually, what has happened? AI had been conquered by uh, the uh, Israelites had been conquered by a small uh, city called AI. And Joshua couldn't believe his eye. 36 people have died already. And Joshua was melted. He was shocked. He was surprised. How? Hey, how could this be? And then Joshua bowed his head to the ground. And then as a leader, he said, oh Lord, what shall I say? How am I going to explain this? That Israel turning their back before their enemies. And then the people will not begin to say, oh, uh, God, couldn't handle, God couldn't take care of them. God couldn't protect them. And then the people will now eventually surrender and begin to make caricature and make more kill of all. What shall be? What shall be? Their great name. What will happen to your great name? Exactly the same prayer we are taking to God in prayer now. God's servant have been going through for years. Yes, there might have been some issues. There might have been some personal issues. But we believe that God forgives and cleanses and purges and purifies. But then Joshua said, what shall I say? If it's written, what shall we say as leaders and pastors who are praying? And if this prayer is not being answered, God, won't you answer us? Are we sinners? No, we are not. Won't you hear us? Won't you intervene? Won't you bring things to normal, say, with situation continue like this? This forever? Want to cry to God and say, oh, Lord, put an end to these tears. Put an end. We are praying in unity now as we round up. That an end will come to these tears. An end will come to this agony. An end will come to this pain. An end will come to this Father, There will be we will come before you. Father, Father, we bring the servant back to you. That will resolve this matter on the table. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes, Father, we thank you. We honor you. We are praying for home, LD family. We are praying for LD family. All that we have told you in the place of prayer, let it be a reality upon our family in Jesus' name. Amen. As we go into this week, it will be testimony gal galore. Amen. Galore. Amen. We testify. Amen. Our spouse testify. Amen. Our pastor testify. Amen. Our members we testify. Amen. They test go around in Jesus' name. Amen. Nobody will regret serving you. Nobody will regret you. Nobody will regret calling We will not be put to shame. We will not be disappointed. The, the one we have been praying about, Holy Father, give us answers to prayer and put smiles on the faces of your children. And Lord, as they start this way, we will see God in Abba. We will see God in Abba. 
you will save, you will heal, and you will deliver. You will strengthen your servant and energize him, empower him, quicken him. As they travel around the world, your hands will continue to rest upon him. Amen. Our nothing evil will happen to him in Jesus' name. We thank you for your advancement. We pray, O Lord, for Pastor Matthew and the family. It is well. And everything Amen. that it is in the true sense of it, it will be well. In the true sense of it, it will be well. In the true sense of it, it will be well. And upon every family who are connecting to prayer every day, it is well in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless Amen. you, sir. Let's continue. You, Let's call upon the name of the Lord. The mercy will locate me. As we started this week, I want you to open your mouth, call upon the name of the Lord. That anywhere I go, anywhere my wife go, anywhere my husband go, anywhere my children go, anywhere I find myself, anywhere I fit it, anywhere I'm invited, anywhere I have purpose to be, anywhere I mistakenly be, all of the name of the Lord, okay? Lord, 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 let your mercy look at me. Let your mercy look at me. Let your mercy look at me. The Bible says the Lord is an example. I shall respond. Why do you to speak like that? You know who has got on the mercy? Yes. The sheep. Go anywhere they have not planted. Go anywhere they have not digged. Go anywhere they have not picked up anything. Mostly they go there, they eat. They go there, they drink. They what what okay. is this is the mass imagine you go to somebody's house and go and eat and to the everyone of this is not the matter of the sheep. Now, the fact that they will not look at you that, oh, mighty God, if you can have a mercy upon sheep or upon animal like this, why not me? That you can of my business, you can my family, you can of my people, of my ministry, you can think of everything I lay my hand upon. Outside my house, in my place of work, call upon the name of the Lord. Oh, mighty Father, King or King, I'm praying for my family. I'm praying for my wife. I'm praying for my children. I'm praying for my husband. I'm praying for the, my for, for those who are in the ministry together. I'm praying for, for my colleagues. Call upon the name of the Lord. Think of the Lord, the Lord. Anywhere I go, anywhere I find myself, anywhere I lay my hand, anywhere I find my feet, all what I'm asking for is this one. Let your mercy fall upon me. Let your master be physically, materially, and spiritually. Think of your mercy I ask for. It's your mercy I ask for. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Let the rain of mercy fall upon me. From the beginning of this work to the end, from the beginning of this to the end of my life, Father, I want to come to have a people. I remember that person on that day. So that only one thing he asked for that day, and that thing lasting for the day of my last day. All of us in the Lord, what is our Jesus name? It is your master. It is your master. What will be for me? What is what in this world? What is what in this world? Before any person is in this world, before men, before women, before individual before the king of the Lord of God, let your mercy fall upon me in the name of the Lord. 
Pastor, your mirror of us, sir. We are grateful all that we have told the Bible son to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Oh, thou that hearest prayer on today shall all flesh come as flesh we have come to you. All that we have told you. We want to testify. We want the world to know it pays to serve you. We want the world to know it pays to trust you. And Lord, our trust in you, we will not be disappointed. Amen. We give the fires of our heart. Everyone connecting to us, we smile. We have testimony to share to the glory and honor of the Lord. Your servant have declared me saying, this week, it shall be the week that we will experience abundant masses in all Amen. that we do in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank Amen. you for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Before we run out, I want to tell us that Mrs. Mandu, uh, she's with us this evening. Mrs. Mandu is um, um, is the pastor, as the pastor wife of Richmond, our branch in Richmond. Ma, we welcome mm -hmm. you. Thank you. God bless you, Ma. The joy that Lord will continue to be your strength, Ma. Thank you. Welcome. Mommy, thanks for joining us. So. <laughs> maybe, maybe Moten himself is, uh, is yes. yes. I think he's at work. You, yeah, Let's share the grace together. Okay. Many grace. Our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you all. Good night. I mean, we are still in night yet. Good morning. Yes, sir. God bless you, sir. To one verse one. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The beginning of glad tidings, something coming to you new, something coming to you from heaven, from the Lord Jesus Christ, about Jesus, the Son of God. As it, As it is written in the prophet, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, and make his path straight. It's talking about what Christ came to do here on earth. And Mark reports it in a special way. He reports it in a peculiar way. And he wants you to understand that when you come in the presence of Christ, you're coming in the presence of the great king. And there's good news coming from that king. Power coming from that king. 
authority coming from that key, anointing that breaks every year coming from that key. In verse 7, he says, and preach, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me. The largest of whose shoes I'm not worthy to sit down and unloose. He said, If you think I'm mighty, there's one mightier coming. If you think I'm great, there's somebody greater coming. If you think I'm holy, there's somebody holier coming. He's talking about Jesus Christ, the one higher than angels, higher than the prophets, higher than the priests. Uh, than the kings of the earth, my chair more powerful than anybody that ever lived on the face of the earth. He says, I'm talking about Jesus, I'm talking about the Son of God, the one that has power greater than every other power, might greater than every other person was trying. He says, I'm talking about Jesus Christ. And I bring the gospel, the good news. And the good news will become yours tonight in Jesus' name. In verse 11, it says, And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. The Father, now God the Father, is speaking from heaven. He's saying, That is my beloved son. Is like no other that ever came. Have you heard about Moses that brought water out of the rock? This one is greater. Have you heard about Moses that made all the chariots of Egypt to sink in the Red Sea? This one is greater. Have you heard about Elijah that brought fire from heaven? This one is greater. Have you heard about angels that came from heaven and when they let miracles happen? This one is greater. This is my beloved son. I have sent him to you to save your soul, to heal your body, to deliver you from oppression, and to set you free. Look at verse 27. In verse 27, we're talking about this Jesus. It says, and they were all amazed. They were all surprised. It was like, we never saw anything like this before. Jesus comes to your life tonight. What you have never seen, you will see. It says, and they were all amazed. In so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority, he commanded even evil spirits or clear spirits, and they do obey him. You know, the Father God in heaven has spoken about him. John had spoken about him. All the people now they spoke about him. They said, what power is this? What authority is this? What great manifestation is this? One word, evil spirits came out. One word, your sickness will be healed. One word, your mountains are taken away. One word, your soul is saved. One word, translation comes to your life. He tells us in verse 34, and he healed many, and he healed many, many that were sick of diverse diseases, and he cast out many devils, and he cast out many devils. Who is going to be a particular of the miracle tonight? Power tonight. You know, if you are there not as a spectator, if you are there not just as somebody looking at other people, and you say, I am here for something. Somebody there, I am here for something. He's going to work miracles in many lives tonight. 
is going to touch many lives tonight. And while you are there, and you sense the word of power and authority in your life, something will happen in your life right there. That person standing there, something will happen. Power will break every yoke in your life tonight. That's why I'm talking to you tonight on experiencing the power of the king. Experiencing the power of the king. You know, my brother, my sister, anytime we just say Jesus, we don't know who we are talking about. Anytime we talk about Jesus, we mention his name in prayer. We say, in Jesus' name. We mention his name in preaching. Can I talk to you about Jesus? We talk to people about Jesus on the phone. When we mention that name, we don't know we're talking about. We're talking about the king. We're talking about the king of glory. Jesus Christ is the king of glory. When he enters your life, when you enter his kingdom, the glory of heaven will come your way. He is the king of all the earth. Think about the king of a community. Think about the king of your tribe. Think about the king of the whole nation. But is the king of all the earth. Is the king of all power. Kings of authority. Kings of power. But this king we're talking about is the king that has all power. All power in heaven. All power on earth. You put everything together. All the powers that angels can boast about. All the powers that men and women can boast about. All the powers that anybody on earth, everybody on earth, put everything together. More than that, he has the power over all the earth. Number one, I said, is the king of glory. Psalm 24. In Psalm 24, I'm reading here from verse 7. Lift up your head, so ye gates. Be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. He's talking about that coming king. If you look at Psalm 22, it talks about him and the shepherd. That's the good shepherd that gave his life for the sheep. If you look at chapter 23, the Lord is my shepherd. He's still talking about him. That's a great shepherd that is taking care of his people. When you come to Psalm 24, it's talking about the God of glory. The King of glory. He's a glorious shepherd. And he says in verse 8, who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Every battle of your life tonight, he will solve. Every problem of your life tonight, he will take away. Open the gates and let the king of glory come in. In verse 9, lift up your head so ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. And in verse 10, he says, who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory. That king of glory is coming to your life today. You see, when you are told, if you want to have Jesus as your savior, where are you? Raise up your hand. We're telling you, the king is calling you. And the king wants to enter into your life with all the power of the king authority of the king and the might of the king and when you have him i'm telling you the greatest thing has happened in your life in some 47 verse 7 verse 47 verse 7 it says for god is the king of all the earth 
for God is the king of all the earth. And then the Almighty God has given all authority unto Christ. God the creator. God the father of all eternity. He called his only begotten son. I'm the king of all the earth. I transferred that to you. And that's why now Jesus Christ is the king of all the earth. And as the king of all power. That's why he said all power in heaven on earth is given unto me. And when he comes to your life tonight, weakness will vanish away. Sickness will vanish away. Infirmity will vanish away. Everything the devil has done in your life, he'll pack everything and sweep everything away from your life. Hebrews chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 2. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 2. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. And then he says, first, being by interpretation the king of righteousness. And after that, also the king of Salem, which is the king of peace. Look at verse 3, it says, Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, he abideth in praise forever continually. Is the king of righteousness. You know, there are many people, they are searching for righteousness. They look for righteousness in River Jordan. They look for righteousness in uh, River Niger. They look for righteousness in River Benue. They think, if I wash with that water, they say, that water will make me righteous. There's no righteousness there. The king of righteousness... He invites you and he says, come. And when that king of righteousness takes over your life, unrighteousness will vanish away. Guilt will vanish away. All your defilement will vanish away. He is the king of righteousness. He is the king of peace. Many people don't have peace in their hearts. They don't have peace in their family. They don't have peace in their community. But Jesus Christ, the King of glory, Jesus Christ, the King of all the earth, Jesus Christ, the King of all power, Jesus Christ, the King of righteousness, He is the King of peace. You saw it there in chapter 7 verse 2 of Hebrews. And He said, if you want this, the peace of God in your soul. The peace of God in your mind. The peace of God in your family. Jesus is the Prince of Peace, the King of Peace. Revelation chapter 15. I'm looking at verse 3. Revelation chapter 15. And we're reading here from verse 3. It says in verse 3, And they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. The Father has committed all that into his hand. The Father, the Creator, is the one that is the King of all the saints. Saints past, saints present, saints future, saints in eternity. But Jesus said, everything that belongs to the Father belongs to me. He has committed everything to my hand. He is the King of the saints. And I'm talking about his power tonight. I'm talking about the one that is what is power. 
His touch is power. His presence is power. His name is power. His word, everything he does is power. And you are going to be connected tonight. Everybody shout connection. You are connected tonight to the king of glory. Connected tonight to the king of all the earth. Connected tonight to the king of all power. Connected tonight to the king of righteousness. Connected tonight to the king of peace. To the king of saints. Is a king of great inheritance. Is the king of great inheritance. I'm looking at some two. I'm reading from verse 6. I'm looking at some two. I'm reading from verse 6. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. There's a father talking about the son. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son with a capital S. Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me. Ask of me. Ask of me. And I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. And the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Is the king of great inheritance. And he wants you to become part of that inheritance tonight. That he will say, you are mine. You belong to me. And everything he has as the king of kings and the lord of lords. Everything will belong to you as well. Tonight we're looking at experiencing the power of the king. Experiencing the power of the king. Anybody there going to have the connection? What is he there? What's the man there? What's the woman there? You're going to have connection tonight. Uh huh. If you are not self satisfied, if you are not saying, I'm all right. If you say, Jesus the king has something that I will get tonight, that power will turn your life around. That power will break every yoke in your life. Tonight is going to be a new day in your life. I said tonight is going to be a new day in your life. Let me talk about myself. Today, I said today, I said today will be a great day in my life. In my life. I'm going to get a new connection. Preacher, are you there? I'm going to get a new connection. Bishop, are you there? I'm going to get a new connection. Lay reader, are you there? I'm going to get a new connection. A Christian worker in a church, I'm going to get a new connection. A newcomer, you came here today, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Power from heaven. The power of the king. The power from glory. The power that is greater than all the powers of the earth. Connection. 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 is coming upon your life in Jesus' name. Your blind eyes will open. Your limb legs will rise up and walk. Hunchback will vanish away. Tumor will vanish away. Impossibility will be possible. That mountain in your life, I command, come out in Jesus' name. Experiencing the power of the king. There are three things we're going to talk about. Number one, preparation for the arrival of the king. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming your way. I said he's coming your way. Preparation for the arrival of the king. Number two, the privilege of adoption by the king. There are many kings that might be merciful. 
many kings that might make provision for people. This king we're talking about, he invites you and he adopts you into his family. The privilege of adoption by the king. Number three, the power and the authority of the king. The power and the authority of the king. Number one. Tell me, number one. Tell me, number one. Shout it out, number one. Preparation for the arrival of the king. Are you getting ready? I said, are you getting ready? Somebody there, are you getting ready? The king is coming. The king is coming. The arrival of the king. Preparation for the arrival of the king. Uh, look at Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. I'm looking at verse 3. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye. Prepare ye. Prepare ye. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Make his path straight. Then you find that important word. That you find that indispensable word. If you are going to receive the king, you will not just sit back and say, I am so and so. You will not just sit back and say, I have read the Bible before. You will not just sit back and say, I'm a religious man. He says, get ready. Prepare. The king is coming. The king of glory is coming. The king of power is coming. The king is coming to your house. I said the king is coming to your house. You prepare. How do you prepare? For Samuel chapter 7. For Samuel chapter 7. And I'm reading here from verse 3. Prepare. Prepare. Everybody shall prepare. In 1 Samuel chapter 7 verse 3. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel. And Samuel spake to all the house of Israel. Saying, if ye do return unto the Lord with all your heart. Then put away the strange gods and Ashtoreth from among you. And prepare. And prepare. And prepare your hearts unto the Lord. And serve him only. And he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. It says, if you want to come, if you want to make way for the king, you want to prepare your heart because they say I'm standing at the door and then I'm knocking if anyone hears my voice and he opens the door I will come into him I will sup with him and fellowship with him it says that preparation will make you to abandon every idol the idol of twins the idol of making money the idol of iron the idol of wood, the idol of candle, the idol of incense, the idol of worshiping tradition. He says, if you really want the king, Calvary has canceled all the candles. Calvary has canceled all the incense. Calvary has canceled all the worship of tradition. Calvary has cancelled all the idols. All the idols of twins. Every kind of idol. And he says you are preparing your heart. You will abandon every idol. Bye bye idol, I'm going to the king. Bye bye evil, I'm going to the king. Bye bye tradition, I'm going to the king. And as you do that, you prepare your heart. You prepare your mind. You say, Lord, I'm ready. The king will come to you today. I said, the king will come to you today. Where are you there? I said, where are you there? God bless you. 
You see, many of you, you say, I'm born again. Ah, but you know the idol. If there is a football game, and then there is a kind of revival service, if it is at the same time, ah, I cannot miss that football game. That's an idol. Anything you exalt above the name of God, you exalt above the worship of God. That's an idol right there. Some people, it's the idol of gambling. All the money you get. I want to make money. I want to make money. The love of money is the root of all evil. And then you gamble. Because you want to reap where you have not sold. That's the idol. But the king is coming. You want to get connected to the king. And the Lord is saying, if you will abandon your idol, you will abandon your gambling. Marijuana. All those evil things you put in, it's your body. So you can be strong and be like a man. So you can fight. So you can do evil. That's your idol right there. And the Lord is saying, the king is coming, clear the way. The king is coming, prepare your heart. The king is coming, sweep all those things away. Everything that is not according to the word of God. The king wants to come into your life. And he will come. I said he will come. And then you will clear the way. You say you are born again. And then there are things in your life. Competing with the love of God in your heart. It appears you cannot live up that. You cannot give up that thing. You cannot abandon that thing. You serve your own opinion more than you serve God. Your own ideas more than you serve God. I like this. I like this. You serve that more than you serve God. The king is not preeminent in your life. The king is not prominent in your life. Is that opinion? Is that idea that is prominent in your life? And you say, today I prepare the way. Lift up your heads, O gates. And let the king of glory come in. Who is this God of glory? It's the Lord God in heaven. It's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And he says, prepare. 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 We're looking at Job chapter 11. Job chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 13. If thou prepare thine heart and stretch out thine hands toward him. He's saying you need to prepare your heart. You see he's telling us over and over. Verse 14. If iniquity be in thine hand. If iniquity be in thine hand. How can iniquity be in thy hand? When you shed blood with your hand, iniquity in your hand. You commit abortion, iniquity in your hand. You steal with your hand, iniquity in your hand. You put leaves and other things together to make juju, iniquity with your hand in your hand. You are violent and you are beating people and killing people. Iniquity in your hand. It says, if iniquity be in your hand. When you commit adultery. You hold another person's wife with your hand. Iniquity in your hand. When you are a drunkard and you are taking that thing with your hand. Iniquity in your hand. He says, if iniquity be in your hand, he says, put it far away. Let not wickedness dwell in the tabernacle. For then thou shalt lift up thy face without spot. Yea, thou shalt be steadfast, and thou shalt not fear. If you prepare yourself, and you allow the king to come in, because thou shalt forget thy misery. Your sorrow will pass away. 
your suffering will pass away. The king is coming. The king of glory. The king is coming. The king of all the earth. The king is coming. The king of all power. The king is coming. The king of righteousness. The king is coming. Is the king of peace. The king is coming. Is the king of saints. The king is coming. Is the king of great inheritance. And he says prepare. 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 All that iniquity. All that sin. You throw them away. If you do that. Tonight, tonight. Today, today. Something definite. Something miraculous. Something supernatural. I see you there. It's coming your way there. I said it's coming your way there. You come out clear and clean. Come out of that dirty water. Come out of that dirty lifestyle. Come out of that evil worship. And say, Lord, I come. I prepare my heart. I prepare the way that the king will come in. Number two. The privilege of adoption by the king. The privilege of adoption by the king. I'm looking at Mark chapter 1. In Mark chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 16. Mark chapter 1, we're looking at verse 16. Many people don't understand. They don't know what happens. When you say, I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. They don't know the deep meaning of that. The world behind me. And the cross before me. The cross before me. The world behind me. They don't know the deep meaning of that. I have decided I will follow Jesus till the end. Though all oppose me, still I will follow. They don't understand. I will follow. I will follow. I will follow. Mark chapter 1. I'm reading here from verse 16. Now, as they walked by the Sea of Galilee, they saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come after me. Something was going to happen. Come after me. Their destiny was going to change. Come after me. The past was to be forgiven. Come after me. A new life was to start. Come after me. Adoption into the family of God was to happen now. Many people don't understand. You want to follow Jesus? Come. Come. The sick is just simple. But when you take that step, heaven will be looking at you. When you take that step, heaven will put down your name. When you take that step, your name will enter into the book of life immediately. When you take that step, you become a member of the family of the king. Adopted into the family. Adopted into the family. There are some people, they don't understand. I'm born again. I'm born again. And I tell them, tell me what happens when you are born again. And I raise up my hand. And then I walked to the front. And somebody there prayed for us. I said, after that, what happened? I said, hey, I come to church. I'm telling you something tonight. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, angels will rejoice because of you. Satan will cry because of you. Evil spirits will cry because of you. Evil powers will put their hand in the mouth. They will say they regret. Because something great will happen to you tonight. I'm looking for somebody. I said I'm looking for somebody. That is going to have that connection tonight. What is he there? I said what is he there? Connection. Connection. You will not go back home the same. When you come to Christ, you are adopted into the family of God. Come ye after me. And I will make you to become creatures of men. And straightway, and straightway, and straightway, 
It says they forsook their nets and followed him. Have you noticed two words there? Number one, forsook.